Greetings from the great state of Alaska. My name is Dr. G. And today I want to share with you a message of hope. You know, over the past eight or nine months, we've been really doing a study on the attributes of God. We've been talking about the divine nature of God. And as we've done this study, we've really been using A.W. Tozer's book, A Knowledge of the Holy, to kind of guide our discussion. And, you know, I think probably the since the beginning of this year, we've talked about the justice of God and the righteousness of God. And as we talk about those two attributes, that really led our discussion uh, into a discussion on the judgments of God. And what I want to do, you know, over the course of the next three to four weeks, I want to talk about the next two attributes of God. And these are very, very special attributes. And when I say they're special, without these attributes, we would not have salvation. Without these attributes of God, we would, we would have no hope. We would be doomed to a devil's hell. And so I, I really want to make sure that we take the time to understand and appreciate and really embrace these next two attributes. And as I introduce you to these attributes today, and this is just an introduction, I want to use a, a scripture uh, out of the Old Testament. This is in the book of Exodus. So if you have your Bibles, if you want to turn to Exodus chapter 33, verse 19. Exodus chapter 33, verse 19. And in this uh, verse, God reveals his identity to Moses. And God does that by revealing to, to Moses these two attributes that really <laughs> define the very nature of God. It says here, And God said to Moses, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And then God says, I will be gracious <clears throat> to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And so let me just read that last part again. God says, I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And so I think by now you, you, you've picked out the two attributes. Grace and mercy. You know, God is gracious and God is merciful. I mean, these two attributes are very uh, important to us as born-again believers. Like I said, without these attributes, we would have no hope of salvation. And because God has revealed himself using these attributes to Moses, it really sets them apart from a lot of the other uh, characteristics that we've been talking about. You know, it's easy, I think, when we talk about grace and mercy for us to confuse these two attributes. They're, they're very similar. Uh, you might even say they're related. You know, they're they're not twin sisters necessarily, but but they're they're sisters. They're very close to one another, and they're they're related. Uh, in layman's terms, I think we've all heard it said, you know, grace is when you get what you don't deserve. Grace is when you get or you receive something that you just don't deserve. And on the other hand, mercy is when you don't get what you do deserve. Mercy is when you don't receive or get what you have coming, <laughs> what you do deserve. And so, you know, those two layman definitions, I think they help us distinguish between these attributes. Um, you know, John Piper, many people are familiar with uh, Pastor John Piper. He has said, uh, God's grace and mercy shines as the apex of his glory. God's grace and mercy shine as the apex of his glory. And, and so I think that this is a great statement of grace and mercy. It's kind of the highlight of God's character. I want to, as I close this evening, I want to leave you kind of with, with an illustration to help you really kind of remember these attributes and how they're related. What we have here is a stem. Uh, if anybody here has plants or has gardens or has a rose bush, you know what a stem is. And so what I've drawn here, this is a stem, 
And let's say this is a stem of God's righteousness and God's justice. And God's righteousness and justice is rooted, these are roots, I don't know if you can tell those are roots, God's righteousness and justice is rooted in God's goodness. God's righteousness and God's justice is rooted in God's goodness. And these are actually three attributes that we've talked about. We, we said earlier, beginning of this year, that righteousness, there's a Hebrew word, uh, Sadiq. And for justice, it's the Hebrew word Mishpat. This word Sadiq, it implied, you know, the, the straightness of God, that God is straight, he's level, there's no crookedness with God. And, and Mishpat was a Hebrew word that uh, really it, it described the righteous judgments of God that are related to his righteousness. And then, of course, we talked about goodness. And when we talked about goodness, I believe we used the example of the prodigal son. And when he came back to the father, the father was so good to him, wasn't he? The father was so good. He put a robe on him, and he just put a ring on his finger, and he was so good to the prodigal son. And So righteousness and justice are rooted in God's goodness. And... What we have next, and this is kind of where John Piper's statement comes in. We see the glory, God's glory, is revealed in these two flowers. And so on the one side we have the grace of God, and on the other side we have the mercy of God. And so God's grace and mercy, they blossom as the flower of God's righteousness and justice. You, you see, if God wasn't good, if God wasn't a God of righteousness and justice, then He couldn't show us mercy and grace. It's because God is righteous and because He's just and because he's good, because of this, God can be merciful and gracious to you and me. And like I said, these are very special flowers. These are very special uh, revelations of God's glory in our lives. We need the mercy and the grace of God in our lives. Amen. We need it. And like I said, it, without it, we don't have salvation. Without it, we don't have hope. But with it, there's great hope, isn't there? There's just tremendous hope. I'm so glad that God is good, aren't you? I just want to say a prayer uh, for you tonight, just say a prayer blessing over you. And like I said, I, I really just wanted to introduce you to these two attributes. We're not going to go into detail tonight. This will just be over the next three or four weeks. So let me just pray for you. Precious Lord, I just thank you tonight, Jesus, for for your mercy and for your grace. God, we need your mercy and we need your grace so much in our life. Lord, especially in these dark days that we're living in, God, we need to see your grace and your mercy demonstrated in our life. We need to see it blossom in our lives, oh God. Lord, I'm so appreciative tonight that, that you're a righteous God, that you're a just God, and Lord, most of all, that you're a good God. Lord, you're so good. You're so good to me. And so, Lord, tonight we just, we love you, Lord. And, and I pray that your Holy Spirit, God, would love us. And, Lord, that you would just cause your grace and your mercy to be so vivid in our hearts this weekend. And for those who are watching and listening, I just pray that your Holy Spirit would do a special work in their lives this week. And, God, cause your grace and your mercy, Lord, to be so evident in their lives. God caused them to, to think about it and to reflect upon it, Lord. And whenever they see a flower, to thank God of your grace and your mercy in their lives. 
Lord, we just give you the praise and all the glory tonight. We love you, Jesus. We love you so much. Amen. God bless you.